Hello and welcome to this video on this ice growth effect. So you can see if I scrub this timeline backwards and forwards here, we've got this growth of um, ice kind of forming down and um, you can see it's very random, very art directable, um, very controllable as well. Okay, so I was inspired by this video that was produced by Man vs Machine. So you can see it's kind of a very similar effect. Now, I really like the way it had this organic kind of growth and, and, and the way that you would need to art direct something like this. Now, if you do, you wouldn't really be able to kind of create this using, you know, a flip simulation um, to get the exact look that you want, especially if you need to um, art direct in a certain way or accommodate feedback. So, um, I want to kind of take an approach and just look at this and to see, you know, the ways. I was quite curious about the ways you could. Okay, so you can see here, if I just quickly jump into this and um, let's go inside here, I'll just quickly talk through the process of what I've done here. So I've used the pig head. Um, what I've done is I've dropped down this clean node. Um, and essentially, what this does is if you check this box here, just like this. Um, you check this box called remove attributes um, and by default it has this kind of asterisk in there and um, that's just telling it to remove all the attributes off of this so it's like this it's cleaning it it's removing all the information from that and just leaving it as basic form I've just moved this up a little bit uh, and then we're pulling this inside a SOP solver um, so the reason why we're using a SOP solver is that we want to create a simulation out of this now it's still going to be similar because we need to base our results on a previous frame to affect the previous frame because it is a mesh that's growing um, but we can control this in a lot of different ways so if I just jump inside this let's go back we'll activate this actually jump inside um, you can see what I've done so everything's referenced to the previous frame inside here now the kind of um, the bones of this it works from using this vdb reshape um and you know the the some of the vdb tools that you can use to kind of you could probably do the same thing but this was just one of the things i thought of initially and what it's doing is it's creating two different vdb so one vdb is being used is being converted because we need to ma manipulate and change and affect this volume so that's been created there and the second thing that's happening here is we're creating a mask so because this needs two vdbs one is the original vdb the second one is the mask that's going to use to kind of affect the way it reshapes this so essentially the what the reshape does the reshape will just offset the surface and that's great but we want to offset the surface in a very specific art directable way here and uh, we want to affect the surface in a random way because we're using we're using noise and you can also see that it's only affecting the surface in certain places based on the direction of the surface so you know the underside of the ears the nose you can see it's very kind of specific and we can control that with sliders as well Okay, so that just gives you a general idea of you know some of the, um, the kind of the main tool that's making this work. Now there's a lot of work and vectors and uh, maths before that because we need to. This is very simple on this side, but this creating the custom mask using noise and uh, direction and affecting certain surfaces. There's a few things we need to do. What we've got here is this attribute wrangle. Okay, so we're going to set a few attributes on the initial points that are coming into this. Now, if you just drag this down, you can see we've got two, we're initializing two different vectors here. So one vector is called an up vector. Um, I've just called this up just because it's just kind of standard term in Houdini, but um, really it probably should be called down because we're making the direction of this vector point down um, based on the effect that we want to do. But you can see based on this, um, direction will give the direction of the go the growth so we could create custom sliders for this and just have this growth moving in um, different directions if we need to okay so we've got that so essentially that's a vector that will point directly down from each one of the points what we're doing here is we're creating a placeholder or initializing another vector um, called VG which is going to be used for the volume gradient now we're just initializing this with zeros so we're not putting any information in it there so we've just initialized and created both of those 
then what we're doing here is we're using a creating a VDB from the polygons. Now with this one, we're using a fog VDB, and the reason why we're using a fog VDB is because it's required by this VDB shape reshape node here. Okay, so next what we want to do is we can't use the standard um, attribute wrangle uh, we need to affect volume so we've dropped down a volume wrangle here and let me just move this down so you can see the code and you can see what we're doing here is we're pulling a volume gradient use it from vex okay and we're applying that to our own custom vector here so we're pulling off the volume gradient from each one of the voxels and we're applying it to this our own custom uh, vector called the VG. Then what we're doing is we're just normalizing that as well. So because the general, general, one of the reasons why we're normalizing this is because we're going, later on we're going to use a dot product and it's a good practice just to do that. Um, and that's just making the magnitude of this vector value of a one. So we'll just activate that for now. As you can see, it's created a fog volume and it's um, you can't really see these attributes um, but they they can they can be shown so if we go to uh we'll just click on that go to primitive you can see you know we've got these attributes stored here they don't kind of you know you don't you can't access the information as easy um, as you can on the points but what we can do is we can use a, a volume trail node and that can then visualize and show us um you know the information on the volume um, because it is a little harder to visualize um, that you know the data that's kind of moving in and out so that's the reason for putting that there okay um, moving down I've used a volume of op now you may think you may be asking like okay why have we used a volume wrangle and then a volume of op here why not keep it all the same well, the reason why is because when you're using noise it's sometimes generally a lot easier to use the kind of predefined um, sliders and controls and um, you've got all those user controls on the vops um, I don't particularly like using vops just because I find it easy to read the flow and the structure from vex but certain situations where I'm applying noise I find it a lot easier to use vops okay so we've got this here which is you know you can see the density of the volume and then we'll just apply this VOP here you can see the way it's kind of broken up with noise now let's just change the background of this so if you hit D over the viewport we'll just go to background change this to dark okay turn the grid off here just so we can see this a little bit clearer okay so if you can jump to this you can see you know we've got a very kind of uniform density and then we're applying noise to the density within the volume of the shape okay now if I just jump inside this you can see we're using the position okay to so the position of each one of the voxels so this is essentially what this is going to do is going to iterate over each one of the voxels there's lots of voxels inside this um, and it's going to use the position of the voxels um, to uh, we, along with the curl noise and then apply that to density so because the positions are all different then the noise is going to be different in different um, parts of it so it's going to give this effect um, we can animate this we can vary this you can use all these different attributes here now like I mentioned before if we was to code this we need to create our own custom attributes for all these different um, effects like amplitude roughness you know all of these and um, that's why it's just a little easier I find it easy using VOPs Okay, so jumping back oh, a little bit too far back um, we'll move down again okay so if you remember what we're doing is we're creating a mask um, we, we, what, what we have is we have two different VDBs we have our general VDB okay that will remesh at some point and then we've got another VDB which is going to be used as a mask now you know we've created the randomness to this so it means that this mask if we were to apply it in this current state it will grow but grow based on where it's masked but it's not going to grow in any direction and we just kind of need to work out how we can make this grow in a certain direction now you may remember before um, I applied the up factor okay um, and that will point directly down and that's pointing down from each one of the points so we've got the information there uh, and we've applied already applied that inside you know you can see it's carrying this information across here in the primitive okay and then again i've dropped down this volume wrangle now if i click on this volume wrangle you can see we've got some more vex code here 
and what I'm doing is I'm creating this custom variable called under okay and I'm storing the results of the dot products of the up vector and the volume gradient okay I'm storing that into a new float value okay so a dot product will give you a value between um, one and minus one um, and that's why we're storing that into a float there okay uh, and then once we've got that value we're, we're determining how much of the density we're going to use so essentially what it's saying is let's just say um, if say it's, it's a calculation working out okay the angle between both of these now if the angle between both of these is very small it's going to identify that it's just you know it's a surface if it's if it's close to um, a value of one it's going to identify as the surface you know underneath here yeah. um, and this if statement is essentially saying okay if that value okay if it say if it is one okay um, and it's greater than the custom slider value that we have we make density to zero so it's just a way of um, clearing out you know some of this mask but doing it in on certain underlying surfaces so the surfaces that we can see you know from the bottom if we were to view it this way okay and that way it controls you know the direction of the growth because we're only going to be growing from certain surfaces okay so you can see here if i just click between the volume vop here and the volume wrangle you can see it's subtracting some of this mask out so it's just leaving you know the mask in the correct places um just so it grows in the correct direction and it also has the noise applied there and then if we select this we just move down you can see we've got this under amount so if i adjust this you should be able to see you know we're controlling different parts of this so we can uh, direct exactly which areas and parts of the surface we want to grow from in the direction we want to grow from and then if I just click on this reshape you should be able to see oh, just click on this you should be able to see okay yeah you've got the VDB there and you can see it's growing from the underside in a noise pattern um, we can animate that noise and then all I'm doing is we're just smoothing this okay and then we're converting it back to a mesh just jump back um, you can also see that I've just applied this mounting node which is just applying a bit of randomness to the surface now you can apply this at render time you can apply that through the shader if you want to it probably makes more sense to do that now what I'll do is I'll just quickly go over some of the points we've touched upon before okay so let's just go back to so just as a quick summary of what we've done um what we had is we've taken the pig head okay we've voxelized that so we've created several different voxels out of the pig head okay so that's our first vdb we've created a second vdb now the second vdb has been masked okay so again it's a volume vdb it's a fog vdb but if you remember in this vdb we've applied noise to this okay so certain areas will have density certain areas won't okay now when we combine both of those into the um, VDB oh, VDB smooth when we apply both of those into the VDB smooth um, it's just going to direct um, grow from the VDB smooth from the noise and in the direction because we've you, we used that custom slider to delete some of the density so we're just going to get like growth from certain parts on certain frames um, and this is all going to be very random and it's going to be driven through using the dot product okay and we got the dot product by initializing those those first vectors now those first vectors that we initialized we created a um, we we got the volume gradient okay so we got the volume gradient from the shape um, we filled that VDB, filled the interior on this, okay. Um, and the volume gradient is essentially a direction pointing from the surface. Now, when you fill this, you add information inside each one of the voxels. Now, these volume gradients are going to point, you know, away from the surface. Okay, that gives a direction. Now, that can be stored 
um, within you know custom attribute and we store all those in in um, our own vector attribute okay and stored inside our own volume okay so we've got you know the direction of the volume gradient and we've also got the up vector as well um, so you can see we get different angles and we're getting different angles from you know depending on the direction of the volume gradient and the up vector okay so this we can and we can measure that so it's very close it's going to be a higher value it's going to be further away it's going to be a lower value so we then set that condition of saying okay if it's you know a very kind of high value so if this value is very high we know it's the underlying or the base or the surface where the normals kind of like pointing down um, you know so it's an area where gravity would affect the growth of the ice and you know it's in the, it's, we can essentially isolate and control that area uh, based on the slider as well by using that condition so if this let's just say is a terrible pig head what we've done is we've isolated parts of the surface so we can isolate the underside of the surface say like all these areas we've isolated that we can control how that falls off with a slider you can add more control that to that if you needed to um, we've applied some noise just so it's broken up and doesn't grow you know in the same place all at the same time okay so we've got noise applied to this um, and then we can animate that noise and then that process is being simulated we've been running the stop solver so that calculation is happening on every single frame and it's giving the growth that you've just seen